seems to me like the trickiest part of solving problems from chapter two is just getting started. Um, you can kind of just stare at the problems for a while and not really know what exactly it is that you're supposed to do. So I tried to put it into sort of an algorithm that you can use for each problem um, or most of the problems in the chapter. There are a few that are done differently where you're supposed to just reduce um, a network to its most simple Okay, and in that particular case you probably just do step four. So the first thing to do is to draw out the diagram. Um, don't just write equations because it will help you to develop um, a better feel for how the problem is going to work. Um, the second would be to write the question and that might be something as simple as um, you know if you were asked to find V naught I don't know what this question is asking yet. We'll take a look at it. I would just write v naught equals, and then I that sort of helps me to remember what it is that I'm actually trying to do. Then you have to determine whether you're going to use KVL or KCL for the problem, and there are basically two two various kinds of circuits that you'll see in this chapter they all kind of you can almost just look at them and see if they are um, KVL or KCL KVL you'd be looking for loops and for KCL you'd be looking for node pairs so here's a loop probably going to do KVL another loop and here is something with a single node pair where I have a bunch of resistors in parallel so that you know I might end up having to use KCL for that problem okay the second or the fourth step would be to determine can I simplify the circuit and will that help me so there are certain situations where it's going to be really helpful to simplify the circuit and others where even though you can simplify the circuit it's not really going to help you get the answer so this one is by case you won't always simplify the circuit um, then you want to label and assign the necessary variables. You could label everything, but it'll help to keep you tethered to the problem if you just label and assign what is necessary. And sometimes you might not know everything that's necessary at the beginning, and you can just add those as you go. But uh, you do want to try and identify what is missing to solve the problem at the beginning. Okay, and then finally you use KVL or KCL to solve the problem. I'm going to kind of skip this step in this video and just show how to get to the place where you actually do all of the arithmetic. The other thing that is useful to keep track of, and I noticed that in the solution sets that were provided with for the um, chapter, they actually don't use make use of these, um, but there are quite a few places where if you use the current division rule and the voltage division rule you can actually simplify um, the problem very quickly so we'll take a look at that and then of course remember that uh, if you're trying to simplify in addition to resistors in series adding and resistors in parallel adding inversely voltage sources add in series and current sources add in parallel Okay. okay, so let's just take a look at some random problems from the chapter. 220 is a question that is asking, oops, I'm trying to find it here on the page, 220 is asking us to find VAD in the network. So the question, so first we draw it, and then we draw the question, VAD. Um, this is a single loop. There are no node pairs, so certainly we're going to want to use KVL for this equation. And then we need to understand what VAD is. VAD means find the voltage at A with respect to D. And that, um, for me, I always just draw an arrow for this. And the tail of the arrow will be at the second value, the D value, 
going to A. And the way that this works is um, remember that potential it's uh, it's like gravity. Okay, if I was standing on the planet and I was jumping up and down, I might call my zero potential the planet itself, and up here would be some positive potential uh, up up above as I jumped in the air. And the higher I jumped, the more potential I would get. But if I then put a table on top of the planet, and I stood on top of the table and was jumping up and down, well then I would call the table my I would create a coordinate system where the tabletop was zero. And so we're, we're sort of free to choose our um, coordinate system. And what VAD is saying is let's make this D sort of the zero and the potential will increase from there. Okay? And if for some reason you were told to label this and it was you still label it this way with the negative down here and the positive down there and if you get a negative answer then you'll know that the voltage actually is the polarity is reversed okay but that won't change your answer at all you will still write the negative answer so now that you've done this you can do KVL and you can choose any loop you want uh, that includes VAD so you could start here at D and then go up VAD, and that would be negative VAD, and then negative 3 volts, uh, I'm sorry, negative, uh, I don't know if I, yeah, negative 3 volts, negative 2 volts, and then uh, positive 12 volts as you come around that loop. Set that equal to 0 and solve it. So we didn't need to simplify there and then we did our labeling and assigning and um, then moved on and solved the, the problem. Okay, here's another one. A little bit um, a little bit strange to look at at first because um, we've got some uh, dependent current and voltage sources but it's a loop. It's a single loop which means we're gonna have to use KVL. Um, let me just make sure. Yes, yeah, so I've I haven't added any labeling to this. Now, I would sit and look at this problem for a while and think about how I'm going to be able to simplify it. And once you write out the KVL, you'll and if I can't see a way to simplify it, I'll just simply write out KVL and start looking at some ways to reduce the number of terms. So for instance, here I'm going to if I were to go around the loop, I would end up with this 2ix, I'd end up with 4ix, then I'd end up with you know a 12, and then I'd have vx as well. But if I look at this part of the equation right here, I know that because the current is constant around a loop that I could rewrite Vx in terms of Ix and then when I know this Vx I can of course you do the same thing with Ix down here replace the Vx in terms of Ix and that way I'll be able to reduce this equation into a single equation with a uh, single unknown and that's a solvable system I'm just looking at my answer right now and that's exactly what I did so originally I had a KVL equation that had a bunch of IX's and VX's and then I rewrote the VX's in terms of IX okay this equation or this problem, let's follow our steps here. We draw the diagram, we write the question. And the question for 239 is um, to find the current I naught 
in this system. Okay, and so I wasn't supposed to do this here, but um, I look at this and I see that I have a, I have a single node pair, right? Because I could collapse these nodes together. Okay, and uh, this one is really simple to to see. And remember, of course, that the voltage is the same across uh, all the resistors. The current is different. When I see a problem like this, though, I immediately, when I'm being asked to find the current across a single branch of a, of a bunch of resistors in parallel, I immediately think of this equation right here which will really simplify the problem. Okay, so we're being asked to find I naught. So I'll write that down. And then I use that equation. Okay, and um, I naught equals R, um, the sum of the resistors in parallel over that individual resistor in question, that 2K. So we'll call that R J, I guess, or R I naught. And then that's times this current here. This is the current, the effective current that you would have if you reduced these three into a single <coughs> uh, into a single resistor. This current right here would still be the same. Okay? And that's being that's what you're multiplying here. So you'd find RP, and RP is just the sum of these, so that'd be 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus um, 1 over 6 uh, and then take the inverse of that and I think I actually set this up here for you uh, to look at. So you can see that uh, when you when you do that when you find that you'll find that it's 1k and then you just take 1k over the 2k and multiply that by um, the current, this is a constant current, so we actually know that I1 is equal to 12 milliamps. And then don't forget to include um, the um, uh, you know, the K and the M to so that you don't get messed up. For instance, if this K wasn't here on the top, then I would look at the milliamps down here and the kili down in the bottom and those would cancel out and this would just equal 6 amps. But because I have K over K, the K's will cancel out in the fraction and I still have that M to contend with and so I know that my um, units for the final answer will be in milliamps. Okay, this is a... I didn't even bother labeling the individual resistances on here but they should be labeled. The key to this one is in just seeing how to simplify the circuit. And I tend to just imagine resistors, real resistors with wires sticking out of them, and try and think about, can I move them without uh, changing the circuit? So for instance, um, I would stare at this one for a while, and I can't necessarily just take this resistor and combine it with these two. I can't take these two and add them because there's this other branch that's separating them. So I'm just looking, I'm going around the circuit and I'm looking for a place to simplify. I can't simplify these two again because there's this resistor branch. But here I could move this node down uninterrupted and it would connect with this node. So I could move this one down, and then these two are in parallel, right? Because I could redraw this as um, just kind of being a little sloppy here, but bear with me. Okay, so then I redraw it like that. Now I see that these two are actually in parallel. And so I'd combine them into one. So when then, then when those get combined into one, 
then I'm left with um, I'm left with this circuit. And then this one comes up here like this, and that one goes down like that and connects to there. But then I see that these two can be combined. So then I combine those two. And I would get this. And finally, these two, and then these two combine, and then the, the two of those combine with this one. And so you end up getting a single resistor. And that's how you would solve that, um, that particular problem. Um, all right, let's look at the next one. OK, this one, uh, 2.73, we're being asked um, to find Vs in this circuit. And we're given that the power of the, on this, that this 4K absistor, resistor is absorbing is 36 milliwatts. So, um, <clears throat> we have to determine, well, let's go back up to our list to make sure we're sticking to it here. We write the question, which we just did. We determined whether we're going to have to use KVL or KCL on the circuit. Now, this circuit is uh, essentially two, these two resistors are in uh, parallel. And we're being given some information about one of those resistors in parallel. So that leads me to think that we'll probably end up using um, KVL or I'm sorry, KCL, because I have, um, yeah, I, because of the node, of the node pairs, I'm just going to assume that I use KCL. Um, so can it be simplified? Well, um, I think that it will become apparent that it can become simplified actually after we start looking at this P4K, okay, because remember what power tells us. It tells us um, several things. We'll write down what the power equation is. It's IV, but IV can also be rewritten as V squared over R or I squared R. Uh, so what I'm potentially being given information about is the current in this branch. And as soon as I see a current in a branch from series, uh, from uh, resistors in parallel, then I immediately think of my fancy little cheat equation up here for current division. Okay, so if I could find I naught. If I could find, we'll call this I naught. So now I'm going to start labeling the equation. I've determined, let me just make sure I'm on track with my um, problem here. We've determined that there prob there's a probability that we'll be able to simplify it. And now we're going to label and assign the necessary va variables. So if I could find I naught, I could use that current division equation to solve for this current. We'll call this um, I1, I guess. So I could solve for I1 because this, I, when I look at these resistors, I can see that I could reduce these. So I absolutely can simplify this equation. These two in parallel can be combined into one. And then the one that's left over will be in series with this 9K resistor. And those two can be added. So we'll e end up having a circuit that's simply a voltage source and a resistor. And then if I knew I, 
I'd have I and I'd have R and I would be able to find out what VS is. So what we'd have to do is uh, um, figure out what I naught is and we can figure out what I naught is by um, solving uh, the power equation for the current and to do that I would use this one right here okay so I'd set I'd say 36 milliwatts equals I squared over R and then I know R so I would solve for I and then that would give me this current this I naught current um, and then I could plug the I naught current into the equation I naught equals RP over R J times I one and RP would be these two combined and RJ would be just the 4k and then I would solve for this I one okay so then once I have that I combine the equations and I solve for VS so that's how I would approach that one okay so in this video I didn't give you the exact answers but what I'm trying to do is figure out how is it that we start on the problem and then once we get that step done we can write out equations and then it's usually just simple arithmetic.